Today we're going to build our final project for SMAW or stick welding and we're going to build a boot scraper. Uh, I'll have the plans, we'll go over them right now. You have your material list or what's called the bill of material. All right, and you'll notice that it has the type of material, how much material, and how long that material needs to be. Okay, so it's real important that you take a look and you can remember what that is. So that's the bill material list up here that's important. Then over here we have our bonus points. This bonus point is possible if you weld a brand logo for your name in the base plate. Uh, you need to get this passed off for me first. You need to give me a sketch on the back side of your blueprints before you weld, and that will give you the five points possible as long as it looks good. All right, no chicken scratch. Over here, we have the front view, the top view, and a side view. All right, uh, the front view here has what we call a cutting plane line or a section line drawn into it. And then you can see what's going on here is that we're cutting this material down this line and then turning it to the side and looking at it over here in section AA to represent A and A over here. These little lines going through the base and the, the scraper are signifying that that was solid material when it was cut. The angle, the little bracket holding the scraper is not being cut, so it is not been hatch marked. Okay, so you have the width dimension of the base plate, you have how far back the leg is, you have how long the leg and how tall the legs are, where all those dimensions are at. Okay, they're all right here. You also have the width of your base plate. You have how far inset the legs are, how thick everything is, where you're punching your holes at, four inches in, three quarters offset, and a quarter inch hole. All right, so all of this dimensional stuff is right here to remind you. In the front view, you're gonna notice some new things that you have not seen before. And that is, are these welding symbols. These welding symbols represent the weld joint, <clears throat> okay? The triangle welding symbol is a fillet weld. And that represents a weld going into an area that has two perpendicular members, such as the back joint of this. When you see two fillet welds on top of each other, that means you're gonna weld both sides of the joint it's pointing at. And right now it says 7018 in two places. One, two, okay? <clears throat> then you have a two parallel line welding symbol. Uh, and that is called a square groove butt joint because this is flush on the front side here we're pointing at that flush face and we're saying to weld that butt joint with 6010 in two places. One, two. Massic, how come you have two welding symbols pointing to the same type of joint? Notice that the symbol over here is on the top of what's called the reference line. And this symbol right here, the butt joint, is on the bottom of the reference line. When you see a symbol on the bottom side of the reference line, that's called the arrow side. So we're gonna weld where the arrow is pointing, okay? When the symbol is on the top side of the reference line, we call that the other side. And when we point to a weld joint, that symbol goes to the other side. So if we're pointing right here, the other side is a fillet weld. When we're pointing right to the face, it is a butt joint. So you have a butt joint with 6010 in two places. Then you have a fillet weld on the other side in two places. This quarter inch um, measurement right here, that's how big the fillet weld should be. So this is half inch bar, approximately halfway up the thickness is where the weld will stop. That's how far across the face will measure is one quarter inch. Finishing off here, we're going to talk about the uh, grading scale. Getting it punched and cut out, correct dimensions, deburred, and tacked together are your first 12 points. You need to pass this whole area off first, but to get those 12 points. After you get it all basically cut out, fit up, tacked together, 
and it looks good, then you're ready to weld it. This is how you get your final eight points. There are eight welds because you have two double welds. So we have four welds, two more, six welds, two more, eight welds. Then you can get five more bonus points by doing your brand. Again, passed off before you weld, let me see the logo. And that's how you get your 20 total points, possible of 25 points if you get 100% plus a good brand. Uh, scoring the welds, three or greater on your weld is one point. A two or less is half a point. And I will also put in here, you'll get half a point on a weld if you put the wrong electrode on the wrong joint. All right, so that would be a two or less. If you welded 6010 where it's supposed to be 7018, I would give you a half point for that okay, and vice versa. So uh, there you have it. There's your plans. Um, so basically just make sure you cut your material out nice and square, uh, bonus points, welds, how you're going to get graded. Don't forget all that stuff. All right. We're going to use this six inch wide flat strap we've been welding on all term. We need to cut one eight inch piece and one two inch piece of that flat strap. And then we also have some half by half solid square bar. Cut two eight inch pieces of that. So let's go ahead and show you how we're going to lay this out and cut it on the shear. All right, so we have our material. I have a tape measure to get my eight inch pieces, but we're gonna use this square to make sure we have a square cut across here. Make sure that uh, the end that you're gonna cut off is square on both sides. So I'm just gonna check, it follows that line is square. I'm gonna grab a piece of soapstone and I'm going to measure out eight inches. I'm gonna make sure that I have a straight line on that eight inches. I need to cut two more inches, so it'll be 10. Oh, thank you, helper. We have our helper here. Then we're gonna cut, uh, mark out our two inch piece. And again, make sure that it's a straight line. This is our square bar. We're gonna make sure we have two eight inch pieces. Now, because the shear cuts on a straight line, we don't need to account for what's called a kerf or the width of a cutting blade. This cuts exactly where you mark it. So I don't need to add that on, so I can double this up. So I'm gonna make an eight inch mark and a 16 inch mark. All right, when we cut with this, we wanna make sure that the blade is gonna come down right on top of that metal. So you might need to shift it. And we put that line all the way across to make sure that both sides are on. So it may take a little bit of adjusting to make sure you get that just right. But you want a nice straight square piece. Tighten down your hold down bar. Slide forward two inches. You'll notice that there's a small notch in the hold down bar. Slide the square bar through there. That's all the metal we need for the boot scraper. One of the things we need to do is we need to bend these pieces of square bar at 90 degrees. Okay, we're gonna bend this at three inches. Now we're ready to bend. This is what we call the power cavity. Uh, and inside the power cavity, we have a 90 degree break. So you're gonna take your pieces and you're gonna evenly space them and so that the point of the break is right at three inches. And you just line that up and slowly break it down until they're 90 degrees. We do not want to squish the bar, we're just trying to bend it. Right about there. Just like that. Okay, bending these both at the same time ensures that they both come out at the same angle. You can bend them separate, uh, but doing so means that you gotta make sure you bend them exactly the same on both tries. So if you put these both in at the same time and bend it, you're gonna end up most likely with the same angle so that they match up, all right? All right, so here we have the punch cavity. The punch cavity, we have a quarter inch punch in, and we need to punch two holes, and we'll lay those out right now. On our plans, it states that we need to punch it right in the middle. So half of eight is four inches. I could just make one mark and scribe it all the way down. We need to punch three quarters of an inch in on both sides. So I'm gonna lay out a little crosshair. You can lower the punch down before you turn on the shear by pulling up on the plunger and allowing it to rest down. Once you have the punch down, you can line it up on your crosshair and push down. When you're at the top, push it back in, 
scrape it out. You can also just slightly hover down with the foot, line up where you want it, push down through, and make sure the scrapers can pull that plate off. All right, so now we got our pieces cut out. Before we go any further, we want to actually take some time and clean these up. I want to get rid of all the burrs, all the sharp edges on both the, the boot scraper part, the pieces that hold up the scraper, and also the bottom edges. So I'm going to go grab a grinder. One of the things you want to make sure of is that there's a nice big burr also on these posts that hold up the boot scraper. You want to make sure that we take those off and smooth them out, round them around if you want. You can do a little bit of extra credit. The extra credit would be making a brand for your name and weld that in the middle of your boot scraper. If you want to go ahead and try doing that, and put down something that looks good to get full points. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay that out. <coughs> All right, there's my brand, JM. What I'm also gonna do right now is lay out where the risers, or the holder for the boot scraper is supposed to be. It's a half inch in on either side. So I can make a nice straight line down each side for the half inch. These are about six inches now. That's laid out that way, inch and a half in on either side. All right, so there's the layout of my plate. My feet go right here and right here. And then this will go half inch down in between them. I'm gonna tack these together first, then we'll weld everything else out. Before I weld anything, I obviously wanna make sure that this piece fits and there's not too much of a gap. So that looks really good. So I'm gonna tack down in here. I'm gonna tack on the inside in case I need to bump them, I can shift it. I'm gonna tack with 6010. Okay, your helmet, bud. I may lay it down because we want the boot scraper, the way the plans say, is flush to the front. Now that we have this dry fit down in here, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a tack. All right, so there's the boot scraper all tacked together. Uh, if you look at the plans, it's gonna tell us to weld a fillet weld on either side of the bases, a 6010 butt joint, and then another 7018 fillet weld up in there. All right, so four 7018 welds on the base, two 6010 and two 7018 welds up on top. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's how we make the boot scraper. Uh, you can mount this anywhere you want on your porch or in the garage. Uh, as you come into the house, this is just one of those handy things you never really knew you needed to get all that mud or whatever off your feet before you come into the house. So uh, we're going to go ahead at this point, just work on the brand. So good luck. I'm just going to mark center. That way I kind of know where I want to place it. And again, I am doing an M with the J hook on one side. So we'll erase those marks. And it may be easier to do this when, um, before you put the posts on. So the boot scraper, uh, it's a fun, quick project, only eight welds on it, but it teaches you a little bit about fit up and how to lay things out. Uh, the cube was no nonsense. You kind of just put it together. This will take a little bit more planning and actually reading a tape measure, uh, things like that. 
I think it's good. Uh, it's simple, but hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks.